Greetings everyone and welcome to a video review of Medieval 2 Toll War Kingdoms Part 1. I'm Seth Kipras, the Cynical Crud, and I'll be your guide for this video presentation. As usual, let's ask ourselves one simple question. What is Medieval 2 Toll War Kingdoms? Kingdoms is an expansion pack for Medieval 2 Toll War. It contains four campaigns, each with its own periods, futures, factions and different gameplay elements. For today we will be covering the Americas campaign. Gameplay wise the campaign plays the same as in the original game with some interesting differences, so I'll explain the gameplay in short order. For the full explanation refer to my Medieval 2 Toll War review. Let's explain the similarities first. The gameplay is still divided into two parts. The first one revolves around managing your settlements, armies, fleets and agents. The second part centers around leading your men in tactical battles. That was short and simple, wasn't it? Let's move on to the new and interesting things. First, the setting. The campaign is set in 1521 and lasts until 1721. There are six playable factions. New Spain, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Apachean tribes, the Chichimeca, the, the Tlaxalans and the Tarascans. Simply put, one European faction invading the natives while the natives are at war with each other. The map encompasses the southern part of North America and Middle America. Initially only three factions are available, but if you manage to defeat the other faction in the campaign, or simply change them to the unlockable side in the data files, then you can play as them. New Spain has the technological advantage, but they suffer from manpower shortage and they need to rely on native mercenaries to bolster their ranks. The available units you can recruit are few in quantity and in unit size. A usual unit of swordsmen consists of 60 men, while in this campaign it's 30 men. This is compensated by better weapons, armor, cavalry, muskets and artillery. Furthermore, to assist them there will be armies led by conquistadors such as Hernan Cortez. Ever hungry for more gold and fresh conquests, Spain sends another expedition to the New World. Wherever the cities of gold lie, these men, God willing, will find them. The way of upgrading your settlements has also been changed for the Spanish. You, you can't build new buildings and units until you get a promotion to the next rank, such as Lord, Count, Marquis, etc. You'll get these ranks by fighting the natives, executing orders given to you by the Council of Nobles and the Spanish Consulate, improving your settlements, gaining money and other such things. As the Spanish, you will need to use your superior equipment to defeat the natives' large armies. Making alliances with some of the natives will be crucial to your survival and your expansion. The natives play differently from the European conquistadors. They have more men available to them to recruit, though the size of units is normal, 60 men. Their best units are available relatively early, giving them the advantage of a quick and strong strike. However, their inferior armor, weapons and lack of artillery makes the them less potent in the long run. Some of the native factions can use cavalry and muskets after some successful battles against the Europeans. These factions are the Chichimec tribes and the Apachean tribes. The Aztecs, Mayans, Tarascans and the Tlaxcalans cannot utilize these advantages from the Europeans, so they will have to rely on vast numbers and, small and smart tactical maneuvers. You still use your agents, though they have different names this time around. For the Spanish, a diplomat is an explorer, a spy is a guide, priests are missionaries and merchants are still merchants. For the natives, their diplomat is an emissary, their spy is a scout and their priest is still a priest. The Apachean priests can call for a warpath, which serves the same purpose as a jihad from the original game and reaps the same rewards. The fire of anger has been lit amongst the Apachean tribes. A warpath has been called, and only the blood of the tribe's enemies will soothe the Great Spirit. 
Beware all. These people bring forth a storm of fury and vengeance. When the natives capture a settlement, instead of exterminating the population, they can sacrifice them to appease their god and provide public happiness in that settlement. Also to note, the Spanish only have towns, no castles, but they can still recruit their best units. You will need a port to bring these units from Europe, so that is also a factor that plays a considerable role in your strategy. Diseases that the Europeans bring to the Americas will affect the settlements of the natives, so if you play as them, this will also be a factor that you need to consider. The music is also different, it is more tribal in atmosphere, melody and rhythm. One more important thing to note is that the generals of the native tribes fight as infantry, since they lack cavalry. My verdict on this campaign is 9 out of 10. The setting is entirely different from the original game and it provides enough challenge for every faction that you play. This has been Set Keepers, the Cynical Crot, signing off.